DIY fiber laser cutter? Check. DIY fiber laser engraver? Check. DIY fiber laser tube cutting machine? Check. I wanted to start the year off with my metal 3D printer project. Uh, it's well underway, but some of the laser components are going to take a while to get here. So rather than sit around waiting, I want to jump right in to building a DIY CO2 laser cutting machine. Let's go! Here's my current CO2 laser. It's a 100 watt glass tube. And the cutting area is 1000 by 640, I believe. It's one of the first machines I ever bought and it's been great. But uh, having built every other laser cutting machine that I have, I feel like I need to build my own and I want to make it better. I know there are a number of DIY CO2 laser builds on YouTube, which are great. Um, however, mine's going to be quite different. Uh, first, I'm going to be using AC servos, which will hopefully uh, allow for some really fast engraving speeds um, on par with um, the best machines on the market. And two, I'm going to be using an RF uh, laser tube rather than a glass tube. Uh, which I've never seen anybody do before. It's going to be about the same size. It's going to be a little bit higher here because I'm going to build a vertical storage area underneath cabinet to support it. But yeah, let's uh, get to building. Here's what I have so far for the 3D model. You can see this uh, plywood cabinet I have it resting on. Um, that's going to be for my uh, sheet storage um, for materials for my CO2 laser and also um, for my fiber laser cutting machine. I'm starting to get metal sheets and acrylic sheets and all kinds of materials piling up and I need a place to put it all. So I think this uh, will really help out. Um, if I hide the body panels here, you can see all the extrusion. Um, the design is mostly complete. I just have to make a couple modifications um, uh, once I get all the laser components in here so I can take some measurements. But um, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Many of my parts have started to arrive. I got a bunch of 4040 extrusion and I've printed out my cut list here. So I'm just gonna get right to it. When I have multiple extrusions, I need to cut to the same length. I like to butt them all up against a square like this and tape them together so I can cut all three of these at the same time. I've got everything measured out here that I can cut for the first round. Then we'll use the off cuts to uh, cut out some more pieces. So let's cut. Okay, I think that's everything I want to cut out today. That's done. We still have a bunch of 2020 for the doors and um, a few more pieces I'm waiting to cut out when the material arrives. Let me start cleaning up this huge mess and then we can start assembling the frame. It's too cold outside for me to build the plywood base. So I've cleared everything off this table and we're gonna start assembling it right here. I finished attaching that first side and I've spun it around here. I've pre-inserted all of my T-nuts for future operations. And now we can attach this uh, second long rail. Now I just need to get these back two extrusions on and we'll have the base done. The base is all assembled and it feels really rigid and everything came out really square. So I think we have a good foundation here to build upon. Let's start doing some verticals. All right, most of the verticals are now installed. Uh, it's starting to look like a frame. Moving right along, I just got these two horizontal beams in. Now we can get this back one installed. Go over here. Already got all my hardware here to just attach it now. Okay, all this inner frame is done. I've still got uh, lots of extrusion cut here, so let's spin this around and keep working. I got all of these front horizontal rails installed. I've spared you the footage of watching me install the angle brackets. The frame is almost done. I just have two more horizontal rails that run here and then some verticals that go around the outside uh, that will form the enclosure. I've also went ahead and put together what will be the lifting table support. I'm going to go under here. I've got these two 15 millimeter rails. 
Let's go ahead and get them installed while it's convenient, while these top beams aren't on here. I'm just gonna try to drop them in place for now. We'll get them aligned later. All right, let's do the other side. These are for the Y axis. They're uh, 700 millimeters long. All right, the frame is done. Uh, it feels really rigid. I guess now I need to start milling out some parts so we can start putting together all of the motion systems. I got all of the cam files set up in Fusion. I've got my material loaded. This is gonna be the first time using my CNC router uh, since I built these sidewalls. So let's see how it works and hopefully it will contain the chips. I think that's all the parts we can fit on this, so let's uh, get this removed. All those parts look like they came out okay. Let me get them cut out of here and I'll sand off the tabs. Nice, look at my floor. It's basically clean. I think the uh, enclosure caught about 99% of the chips, so that's awesome. Here are the parts we just cut out. They turned out really nice. Um, I just need to tap some M5 holes in them. Uh, these are all for the Y-axis uh, motion system. Um, and for these two guys, they're actually three parts. And uh, we're gonna use the laser welder uh, to weld those together. Um, you know, actually, I, I initially wanted to build this machine uh, using my fiber laser tube cutting machine uh, to build the frame uh, out of square tube and then weld it all together. But um, I decided it would really alienate anybody if they wanted to try to replicate this machine. So that's why I went ahead and made it out of extrusion. But uh, I can't resist. I'm going to try to do some uh, aluminum welding on these little parts here. If anybody wanted to replicate it, um, you know, you could definitely uh, machine these in a fashion that they would assemble. Or, you know, maybe even just 3D print them. But uh, anyways, let's get to tapping some holes. All the holes are tapped. So these are the two parts that I want to weld together. Um, you can see here, I made a little groove to uh, make it easy to align this piece. And then I'm gonna weld together like that for both of them. If you didn't see my fiber laser welder video, let me fill you in here. Last time I tried to weld aluminum, um, I was having trouble with the wire getting uh, binding up in the wire feeding machine. And since then I've learned a couple things. One, I should be using thicker wire, which I have here now. And two, I learned that there's a special, uh, I believe it's graphite tube um, that's better for aluminum that helps it to slide through the tube. So let me get this set up here and we'll try this out. I got the graphite wire feeding tube installed and it seems like it's gonna work well so far. Got my aluminum spool, it's 1.2 millimeter diameter. And uh, yeah, I've got the power cranked to 2000 watts. So let's give this a go. I've got my first part clamped up here. Let me just put on my glasses and we'll go.
All right, let's do the second one. Let's see if we can get these assembled. All right, something like that. Let's get these components assembled. I have these pillow block bearings with the eight millimeter shaft, the gear for my 15 millimeter belt. So I just need to uh, attach these with some M5 screws. All right, that feels good. This is the one that's gonna have the two eight millimeter rods coming out for the Y axis. I've already got my short belt on here to go to the servo motor. Actually, just looking at it, um, I'm, I'm gonna need to put a longer eight millimeter shaft in here uh, for the couplers. All right, cool. I've grabbed a longer shaft here that can accommodate the couplers. So it goes something like that. And then the servo will be mounted down below. This bracket is to hold my 400 watt servo. So let's go ahead and get this attached here. So go just like that. All right, cool. Got this belt gear on here. Uh, it's a 20 tooth gear. It's gonna go right on there. Let's start adding all this hardware for the Y axis motion. Got some drop-in T-nuts on here. I've spun it around here so we can attach these on the back. The center one's going to go right here somewhere. I'm just going to loosely put it on for now and we'll line it up once we attach the motor. So the motor is supposed to mount right here. Like so. And I can slide it up and down to put tension on it. But um, you can see here, these angle brackets are in my way. I didn't put any of the brackets in my 3D model because it takes forever. And this is the second time now it's come to bite me. Um, I'll explain the other time uh, later. So let, let me see uh, if I can get a slightly longer belt. If it's not too expensive, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll just take off these two corner brackets. That way it'll fit. I just cut out another plate of parts here for the belt tensioners. So let me get these cleaned up and we will weld them together. I just need to tap two M4 holes here. All these parts are prepped now for the uh, belt tensioners. These will go like this. Like that. And like that. So let's uh, try welding these together.
for attaching this last piece, I went ahead and inserted the shoulder bolt to make sure everything's gonna be lined up. And I've clamped it in place, and then I'll try to hit these two lines here. And I can take out the bolt and flip it around to the inside corner. I've assembled this one. There's just an idler pulley on here. Probably just leave it loose like that and let it track with the belt. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna work. Let's install this one real quick. I have a shoulder bolt here. Okay, let's install these on the machine. So the belt tensioner is just gonna go right here in between the belt. Um, I kept it separate from these because I wanted them solidly mounted. Um, so I'll be able to just pr slide it up to put tension on the belt. So we'll just set it right here for now. Something like that. The one on this side is going to go here. I was able to order a slightly longer belt. So we'll wait a couple days for that to come in. Um, I also discovered that I forgot to edit this part and this uh, slot here supposed to extend all the way to the end um, to give access for the belt to pass through there. Um, so I'm going to throw that on my milling machine and notch that out real quick. Um, yeah, so when the belt comes in, we'll get all this reinstalled and get these two rods cut to length and the Y axis should be pretty good to go. I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. I have probably 95% of the components on hand. So I'm going to try to make this a short video series and get right through it because we have a lot of projects to get to this year. Um, thank you to all my Patreon supporters uh, for making all this possible. Thank you guys.